On Overdrive today, we check out the naked version of the TVS RR310, find out what's changed in the Tata Nexon facelift, and get you details about the latest Royal Enfield Bullet 350. Hello and welcome to Overdrive, I am Soini Dutt. TVS is on a launch spree. Close on the heels of the launch of the electric scooter X comes the naked variant of the RR310. This is the TVS Apache RTR310. The naked version of the RR310. It loses that fairing of course, but it packs in a lot more. So does that make it the best 310 to buy from the TVS BMW family? Let's find out. The yellow scheme looks a bit overdone to me. But the Sepang Blue, which is a colour scheme that I had recommended TVS should make after their ARRC success last year, looks the best in my opinion. But it comes at a rupees 10,000 premium, which is a bit much if you ask me. The front end, the Z-inspired design, Street Fighter, Yama MT, people are calling it a hodgepodge of designs. I think it's come together quite nicely. It's a very smart looking motorcycle, no matter what angle you look at it from. I'm not going to pick out a pretty angle because the front, the side, the tail, all of it looks quite nice to me. It's also the most accommodating RTR yet. It's the most roomy and because it's coming from the RR310, it's also got rear set foot pegs. So you definitely want to take a longish test ride to ensure that this is a comfortable posture for you. The 800mm seat height is really good. It's going to accommodate most Indian riders, but it is a more sporty, a more committed riding posture than any of the smaller RTRs. And that may or may not be to your liking depending on what you want from your sports naked. Like the RR310, these foot pegs do dig into the corner quite quickly. This isn't a track machine, though TVS have tinkered with the internals of the engine to push out more power and torque than the RR310. And hopefully, all these advancements will flow to the RR310 as well. The lack of a fairing and the wind hitting you at speed is going to take a toll on the top speed. That is why the 150 km h top speed claimed for this motorcycle is 10 kmph lesser than the RR310. Had they carried over the RR310's engine unchanged, the performance gap would have been wider. The 2 PS bump in power then compensates to an extent for the lack of the better aerodynamics that are offered by a full fairing. Even the torque is slightly bumped up and it's dialed in 1000 RPM earlier compared to the RR310. That is essentially to give you a much stronger mid-range to get you brisker performance off the mark. But honestly, in the city environment, it can get a little cumbersome, especially when you're riding in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic. And with that TVS glide-through tech, the bike just keeps lurching forward quite a bit. So all of this can get a little annoying. Easy trick for that, just engage the urban mode, which will restrict the power to about 27 PS, and then feather the clutch lever. Now the clutch lever is also adjustable, so that also makes it less cumbersome for use in the city traffic. There are plenty of riding modes to choose from. Urban and rain with reduced power, or the full-blown sport, track and super motor modes for the fun times. Now we couldn't really get a chance to try out the super moto mode. However, we did get a chance to try the sport and the track mode thanks to a ride organized at the Thailand circuit, not to be confused with the Chang circuit. Now on this track, we were able to ride a few laps. It's a tight track. There are some fast flowing straights as well, some fast flowing corners as well. Now the difference in the sport and the track mode isn't very noticeable even out on the racetrack. I think the best way to enjoy this motorcycle, whether you're sport riding or riding on the track, is engage the sport or the track modes and also turn off traction control completely. That is what opens the true character of the engine and just makes it go wild. And then you can have a lot of fun. The stability offered by the Michelin Road 5 tyres and the excellent chassis derived from the RR310 makes it an excellent handling package too. And you won't really complain for traction often. But the suspension is set up on the softer side compared to the RR310. And whether or not you take the motorcycle to the track at all, I'm still going to urge you to choose the adjustable suspension. Rupees 18,000 for a fully adjustable setup is a very small price to pay. For the kind of adjustability that it gives you, once you are able to set up the motorcycle to your preference, it is just a very rewarding experience, whether you're riding on the streets, or just commuting, going sport riding, sport touring maybe, and even maybe occasional track days. All of it just comes together nicely once you have that adjustable suspension. So 18,000 bucks, not a big price to pay. Now I also had a chance to try out the big feature, the cool seat 
and I think it just works fabulously well. Even with the waterproof lined thick gear that I was wearing yesterday, I could feel the effects of the cool seat and it just works. I think TVS should just make this an accessory available on all their motorcycles. That's how good it is. Just make it 5 degrees cooler maybe. Temperature control seats are usually available on more expensive touring machines and it's good to see TVS engineering it at this price point. Another feature that comes from the higher-end motorcycles is the ability of the TFT instrumentation to connect to your GoPro action camera and allowing you to control it on the go. However, this is a feature we couldn't try on our short ride. So more on that with a road test where we'll also talk about the real-world fuel economy and the performance figures. Summing it up, I think this is the best iteration of the TVS BMW 310 platform yet. TVS needs to fix the traction control which is too intrusive. They need to get rid of that choppy throttle and need to make the acceleration as linear as the RR310. Apart from these easily fixable gripes, I think the RTR310 is an excellent all-round package. It is packed to the gills with tech and features. And I think if you really don't care much about the fairing, this is the best TVS motorcycle on sale at the moment. Definitely the biggest surprise of 2023 so far. Well, the motorcycle has been launched in a very interesting space. It will be going up against the likes of the BMW G310R, the Bajaj Dominar 400, Triumph Speed 400 and also the KTM 390 Duke. We'll take a very quick break here on that note. Come right back. We'll tell you all about the facelifted Tata Nexon.